already, we're still talking about alkenes in this video, but unlike in the previous ones, instead of adding something to an alkene, we're going to break apart the alkene, and we're going to do so through the process of oxidative cleavage. Here we're going to use potassium permanganate or ozone to cleave and oxidize the alkene bond. Let's start by looking at an example of alkene oxidation with potassium permanganate. When an alkene is exposed to potassium permanganate under basic conditions and is heated, then the product is going to be oxidation. During the oxidation process, the alkene bond is broken, and the carbons that were part of the alkene become doubly bonded to oxygens. Depending on how many substituents the alkene had, the products may either be ketones, carboxylic acids, or carbon dioxide. The nucleophile, again, is the alkene. The electrophiles are the oxygens on the permanganate ion. The mechanism of this reaction proceeds through a five-membered permanganate ester ring, and the products are maximally oxidized. And what we mean by that is that if the alkene has two substituents, then when that carbon breaks off, the products are going to be ketones. If one of the carbons of the alkene has only one substituent, then that portion is going to become a carboxylic acid. And if one of the carbons of the alkene has no substituent, then when that carbon breaks off, it's going to be oxidized all the way to carbon dioxide. Let's briefly take a look at the mechanism of oxidation with potassium permanganate. The reaction starts analogously to what we saw for osmium tetroxide, where the electron density of the alkene grabs one of the oxygens, and the electrons from the neighboring oxygens attach themselves to one of the alkene carbons. This produces a five-membered permanganate ester ring. At this point, if we're not heating the reaction, then this would produce a diol just like osmium tetroxide did. However, if we heat this reaction, then the bond between the two carbons breaks, moving the electrons over to the oxygen bond. The bond between the oxygen and manganese breaks, and the electrons go here. Then lastly, the neighboring manganese and oxygen bond breaks, and these electrons come over to this bond, which results in two carbonyl compounds. Then in the presence of a strong base, the permanganate oxidizes the aldehyde further to carbon dioxide. And the byproducts of this reaction are manganese oxide and water. Now let's take a look at what products will form when we expose one pentene to hot basic potassium permanganate. Under these conditions, the alkene bond will break, and each of the carbons that formerly belonged to an alkene will be doubly bonded to its own oxygen. And notice that this portion of the alkene has only one substituent, so this piece is going to be oxidized to a carboxylic acid. The remaining part of the alkene only has hydrogens, and this is going to get oxidized all the way to carbon dioxide. So our products are butanoic acid and carbon dioxide. Let's take a look at a different example, where we are given the products of the reaction and the reaction conditions, and we have to figure out what the starting material is. This product is the outcome of an oxidation reaction and the starting material is going to be some kind of an alkene. To figure out what kind of an alkene it was, the best thing to do is to take the ketones and face them toward one another. Then mentally scratch out the oxygens on the ketones and build a double bond in their place. And then mentally get rid of the OH group that was part of a carboxylic acid. When we do that, we find that the starting material is one methyl cyclopentene. Now let's look at another method of oxidizing alkenes to ketones. In this case, we use ozone in a non-protic organic solvent at negative 78 degrees Celsius. And the second step involves dimethyl sulfide. This reaction is very similar to oxidative cleavage with potassium permanganate. However, ozonolysis is a little bit gentler in the sense that the products of this reaction are not going to be the fully oxidized products, and oxidation will only take place to ketones and aldehydes. The nucleophile is, again, the alkene. The electrophile is the ozone. The mechanism involves a five-membered ozonide ring, and the products are limited to ketones and aldehydes. Now let's take a look at the mechanism of ozonolysis. In the first step, the electron density of the alkene goes for one of the oxygens of ozone, and the oxygen on the other end of ozone attacks one of the alkene carbons. This results in the five-membered ozonide ring. At this stage, the electrons in the ring rearrange themselves, and the carbon-carbon bond breaks and the electrons come over to the carbon-oxygen bond. Simultaneously, the oxygen-oxygen bond breaks, and the electrons shift to this oxygen atom. And lastly, one of the lone pairs on this oxygen comes down to make a double bond with the carbon. As a result, we get a ketone, 
and we get another compound where one of the oxygens is doubly bonded to the carbon, but is also singly bonded to another oxygen. And the two oxygen participating in this oxygen-oxygen bond are still pretty reactive. So at this stage, the negatively charged oxygen acts as a nucleophile, and it attacks the carbonyl carbon that has a partial positive charge. The electrons from the carbonyl bond in return attack the other carbon. This results in another ozonide ring. At this stage, we introduce dimethyl sulfide, whose lone pairs attack one of the oxygens. This results in the cleavage of the oxygen-oxygen bond, as well as the cleavage of this carbon-oxygen bond. This produces one ketone and an intermediate. And in this intermediate, the lone pair electrons of the oxygen come down to make a double bond, and this oxygen falls off and leaves with the dimethyl sulfide. Then as a result, we get our final products, one of which is going to be a ketone and the other one is an aldehyde, which of course depends on what our starting material was. Now let's take a look at the two examples that we just looked at with potassium permanganate. In the first, we're going to expose one pentene to ozonolysis conditions. To determine what the products are, the first thing to do is to just remind ourselves where the hydrogens are on the alkene. Then mentally break the alkene bond and mentally place double bonded oxygen atoms in the place where the alkene was, each bonded to one of the carbons, and leave the hydrogens where they are. And in the case of ozonolysis, that's pretty much it. The products are going to be 1-butanol and formaldehyde. Whereas recall that with potassium permanganate, we had butanoic acid and carbon dioxide. And that is the major difference between oxidation with ozonolysis and oxidation with potassium permanganate. Ozonolysis stops at aldehydes and ketone and does not go all the way to carboxylic acids. Now in the second example, we're going to expose one methylcyclopentene to ozonolysis conditions. And again, let's just remind ourselves where the hydrogen is and where we're going to break the bond. And the resulting product is going to be this structure. Notice that on the right we have an aldehyde, whereas in the case of potassium permanganate we had a carboxylic acid there. Hope this was useful in helping you build your organic synthetic repertoire, and stay tuned for more videos where we're going to discuss more reactions in the future.